we are going to be looking at the very last section of the book of Acts. And this is a very special section in the book. It's not one that gets preached on very often because at this point in the book of Acts, all of these missionary journeys that we've been discovering over the last few weeks are now over. You know, we generally count three big missionary journeys in the book of Acts, and they're all led by these teams of missionaries, primarily by the Apostle Paul. And they go around to the known world, and they're sharing the gospel with the, with the known world. But at this point, when we get to about chapter 21, they are over, and the Apostle Paul decides that he's going to return to Jerusalem. So he goes back to Jerusalem and he re-engages with the Jewish community in Jerusalem. He does a rite of purification and does some other things to engage. And, and it's good for to some degree, but there are still people in the Jewish community who are angry at Paul and who resist Paul. We're calling this series The Empire Strikes Back, and this is yet another example of the powers and the forces of the world striking back against the, these early Christians because in this Jewish community in Jerusalem, there is this great resistance, and they end up forming a mob and actually physically attacking Paul. So they beat Paul, and as they're beating him, the Roman authorities arrive, these are the Romans, Roman guards, and the commander of these guards come, and they actually save Paul from being beaten to death. They stop the beating, but then they arrest Paul. And after they arrest Paul, they start taking him into custody, and they're taking him to the barracks where they're going to hold him. And just before that happens, Paul asks the commander if he can address this mob, if he can talk to the mob. And so that's what happens. The mob has attacked Paul, he's been arrested, and he asks if he can speak to this mob that's been attacking him. And that's where we pick up our scripture passage today, near the end of chapter 21. So as we turn to the Word of God, let's pray together. Oh God, you speak to us in many ways. You speak to us through other people, through community, uh, through through moments of our lives, and we want to be attentive to those moments. But we acknowledge in this time right now that the most significant way that you speak to us, the primary way that you speak to us, is through your word. And so send your Holy Spirit into our hearts and minds that as we turn to your word now from the book of Acts, that you would speak to us, that you would remove obstacles, that we would hear you, O oh God, in this time. In your name we pray. Amen. So hear the word of God from Acts chapter 21, beginning at verse 40 and moving into chapter 22. When he had given him permission, Paul stood on the steps and motioned to the people for silence. When there was a great hush, he addressed them in the Hebrew language, saying, Brothers and fathers, listen to the defense that I now make before you. When they heard him addressing them in Hebrew, they became even more quiet. Then he said, I am a Jew born in Tarsus of Cilicia, but brought up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel, educated strictly according to our ancestral law, being zealous for God, just as all of you are today. I persecuted this way up to the point of death by binding both men and women and putting them in prison as the high priest and the whole council of elders can testify about me. From them, I also received letters to the brothers in Damascus, and I went there in order to bind those who were there and to bring them back to Jerusalem for punishment. While I was on my way and approaching Damascus, about noon, a great light from heaven suddenly shone about me. I fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to me, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? I answered, Who are you, Lord? Then he said to me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom you are persecuting. Now those who were with me saw the light, but did not hear the voice of the one who was speaking to me. I asked, What am I to do, Lord? The Lord said to me, Get up and go to Damascus. There you will be told everything that has been assigned to you to do. 
Since I could not see because of the brightness of that light, those who were with me took my hand and led me to Damascus. A certain Ananias, who was a devout man according to the law and well spoken of by all the Jews living there, came to me and standing beside me, he said, Brother Saul, regain your sight. In that very hour, I regained my sight and saw him. Then he said, the God of our ancestors has chosen you to know his will, to see the righteous one and to hear his own voice. For you will be his witness to all the world of what you have seen and heard. And now why do you delay? Get up, be baptized, and have your sins washed away, calling on his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So I know that it is not a new idea for you that Christians share their stories with one another, right? I mean, we talk about this a lot, that the, the way that God has worked in our lives and the way we became a Christian or just the way God touched our hearts even yesterday, these form stories in our lives that we really are called to share with one another. Now, sometimes we have these stories, but we hesitate to share them. And I think there are a variety of reasons why we might hold these stories to ourselves. We might not want to share them with people. We might not want to share them because maybe we're afraid of being judged, right? I mean, maybe the person who we have a moment to share our faith story with is someone who we think might jump to a conclusion about us or someone who might judge us in some negative way if we start talking about Jesus. And I think there are other reasons that we might not share our story too. Sometimes we don't share our stories because we think it might be not interesting enough. I remember a a Christian comedian from the 80s who actually made up his testimony about Jesus Christ because he thought it was boring. And so he had to spice it up more and he became very famous until it turned out that he had lied about his testimony. So there are these, these times that we feel called to share, but we think, oh, that's, that's maybe too boring or it's, it's, not, it's not going to be interesting to that person. And we hear so many uninteresting stories in our lives, right? I mean, we even have this new uh, kind of expression that that you say with someone when they're telling you a a, a boring story, right? You say, cool story, bro. And that's this, you know, sarcastic way of saying, that's not really, you know, interesting. Like someone saying to you, hey, you know, I was out with my friend and we were having this sandwich and he said, wow, I hate tomatoes. And I said, I know, like, I really hate tomatoes too. And then you say, wow, cool story, bro. Because that was not really interesting. Or if that doesn't resonate with you, try this. I remember... When I was a little kid, I would talk to my grandmother about Speed Racer, great cartoon from my childhood I just loved, and I would tell my grandmother all about all the buttons on Speed Racer's steering wheel and what they did in his race car, and she would always look at me and say, that's nice, honey, (laughs) you know, and that was the first time I realized, oh, you, you're not interested in Speed Racer. That was like news to me, right? But when we share our story about God, it is a very different thing, right? Because our story about God is not about us. It's about God. It's about what God is is doing in, in our lives. And that is always an interesting thing. That's always a cool story for that, for that reason. No matter how maybe mundane the story may sound, it really is the story of God's activity in our life. And so this is true for absolutely every single Christian, okay? It doesn't matter at all who you are. This is absolutely true because if you're a Christian, if you're walking with Jesus Christ and Jesus is is part of your life, then that means you have this journey with him of discovering how, what salvation means to you, of, of discovering how you engage with the community of believers that is the body of Christ. It means that Jesus is working in your life in sometimes subtle, sometimes miraculous ways. It means everything. And so when we think about how Jesus works in each of our lives, it blows us away, right? It's something that we absolutely can't just keep to ourselves. It is something that just cries out to be shared. 
because it's a story of God's work in your life. Now, in our passage of Scripture today in Acts 21, at the very end of Acts 21, we have the Apostle Paul, and he has this opportunity to speak to this mob. Now, these people have just been attacking him, and so you might wonder what he's going to say. Is he going to chastise them, say, you should not have been beating me up? What's he going to do with them? And you know what he does is he just takes the opportunity to share his story. He talks about his testimony and how Jesus Christ is working in his life. Now, in this case, he shares a very personal story of his encounter with Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus. Now, you might remember that. It's a popular story. We preached on it many weeks ago when we began near the, uh, the later part of the middle of the book of Acts, later part of the beginning of the book of Acts. We, we preached about that. And so you might know that story of Paul and his encounter on the road to Damascus, and you just heard it again in our passage today because this is what Paul shares. He shares from his heart and tells his story. But this whole section of the book of Acts, okay, from from about chapter 21 all the way to the end, one thing happens, okay? This is a section, and this is all about Paul's journey. He gets arrested, and from this point on, he moves from one courtroom battle to the next and to other kinds of scenarios one after the other, all the way to the end of the book of Acts, and in almost every single scenario, you know what he does? He shares his story every single time. Paul gets arrested, and he's, he, he shares his story with the mob, and then they take him to the barracks, and, and after he is in custody at the barracks, he goes before the governor of the region, and this governor's name is Felix, and he goes before Felix. He's on trial, and what does Paul do? Paul shares part of his story. Uh, the next thing that happens after two years of Paul being in custody in this location, uh, people come and visit him, and he shares his story with the people who are coming to visit him. And then Governor Felix gets replaced by Governor Festus, and the same thing happens. Paul goes before Festus, and Paul shares a small part of his story with Festus. And then along comes King Agrippa. Now, King Agrippa is the last Herod. You recognize the name Herod, of course. And King Agrippa uh, Agrippa comes, and he um, has this big trial before with Paul. And what does Paul do? He shares his story. And actually, with King Agrippa, Paul even tries to convert him. And the king says, what, are you trying to convert me? And Paul says, well, sure, basically, you know, this is what happened, not word for word, but that's what happens with uh, with King Agrippa. And, uh, And then Paul appeals to Caesar. And so Paul actually wants this process or seems to want this process to continue all the way up to the emperor, one after another. So they put him on a ship to Rome to meet the emperor, this would be Nero, and on the way to Rome, he has a shipwreck. And on the island of Malta, he meets people, and you know what he does there? He heals a bunch of people, but we presume that he's sharing his story with them too. And then he gets to Rome, and he's under house arrest in Rome, and that arrest is also for a period of two years. And also in that two-year period, people come and go, and they visit him in his house. And as they're visiting him in his house... He's sharing their story with them. That's the the progression of the book of Acts. Now, we presume this progression continues in his life to some degree. Tradition has it that he was released from that imprisonment at a certain point and then somehow comes back to Rome, and we don't know the process for that because the book of Acts in chapter 28 actually ends with this house arrest. We, We don't get the whole story of him going before Uh, before Nero, but we presume that is, in fact, what happens because the book of Acts talks about it going that direction. But the point is that at every single moment he has, he shares his story. Now, he does not share the entire road to Damascus story every single time, but he does do it twice. Two of those times, it's this personal journey of him sharing uh, his encounter with Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus. But other times, it's a little theological thing. He talks about the resurrection a couple of times and the disagreement that some of the Jews had about the resurrection, so it's theology. Other times, he just kind of assumes that the person knows 
the story because he'll say, he comes in and he'll say, um, hey, I'm part of the way. And the way is what this part of the book of Acts calls the Christian movement. And he'll just say this, and it's clear that the people hearing that term, the way, know what it means. And so he just allows them, and it's a given for, for him that, that they know the gospel. So those times of sharing the story are very short, very concise. And still other times, it's, it's a, a proclamation of the gospel. He explains the gospel to people. But every point along the way, it's a story that he shares in every kind of scenario, in scenarios that we would maybe completely hesitate to share our story. Paul shares the story because he's called to do so. Now, when was the last time that you shared your story with someone? Your story of God working in your life just yesterday, or your story of God working in your life when you first became a Christian, or when God did something significant in your life, big or small, when was the last time you shared that story with someone? But let me ask you a second question, and that is, when was the last time you heard a faith story shared with you? A faith story that, that transformed your faith, that encouraged you to know Jesus more and more. When was that? Because I think being part of a Christian community, that's, it, this is part of being a Christian community, is sharing our stories, and it, even beyond the Christian community too, but also hearing those stories and being encouraged by them. Now, I'm sure some of you remember that um, not quite a year ago, we had a series in this sanctuary where we had five different people come and share their faith story with us together. And so maybe you're thinking of that. If you don't remember that, we have videos of three of those testimonies on the website. You can go and, and hear those stories after church on Sunday. You go to the Who We Are and the Mission, click Mission, and then you can see those stories. Maybe um, it's uh, an encounter you had with someone quite recently. I remember just a few weeks ago, uh, Neva Braun, who, who passed away this week, you know, and we just care about Neva so much and are so grateful for her. Uh, Neva just a few weeks ago shared part of her story with me and I was so blessed by hearing about her faith. Maybe it's in the new members class. Do you know we do this every new members class? Some of the elders get to come and they get to hear and it's my favorite thing. They get to hear about how the Lord Jesus Christ is working in people's lives and we share those things. Sometimes they're big stories, sometimes they're small stories. If you can think, can you think of a big story that someone shared with you? I, I can. Many of you know Sandy Reby, right? Sandy has this really big story of God working in her life. It's a story of when she was diagnosed with cancer many years ago, and she was not expecting to live long. But her, Jesus Christ, healed her. She was miraculously healed, and she gives credit to God for that. She has an amazing story to share about that. That is this big story that happens. Other people, though, have a different story. And that story can be a story of, of suffering and God encouraging us in the midst of that. Other people have small stories. Like I remember when my family first came to Hamblin Church, this is a very small story, but we, uh, we had to, you know, our kids had to move high schools and we had to move locations and it was a big transition and Kathy and I were really praying for our kids. And you know what? You guys welcomed them in just the best way sending them little cards, saying hello to them on Sunday morning. Um, there's a church member here who's been taking pictures of Nolan's hair progress. And, <laughs> and you know, Nolan's hair as it grows. Uh, that's a small story, but it meant so much to us, right? God's at work in people's lives. We get to share that and we get to hear that. And so we want to end today. It's All Saints Sunday. And so we want to thank God for the people who've shared their stories with us. And we want to pray and ask God who he might be calling us to share our story with. Those two things. And so we want to end today with a time of reflection. We're going to have some music playing. And in this season, or in this uh, a moment, in worship I mean, 
um, I'll invite you to stand just as you feel led and walk forward to um, one of the spaces where you can light a candle. This is not the only one, and there's plenty of room up here for more than one person, but also by the window, there's a candle station. And in the back, don't forget this one, but right behind in the back, there's also a candle station. And for the choir, we have this little candle station right here. And in this time of reflection, do one of two things. You can come up and light a candle for someone who has been significant to you because they shared their story with you. They encouraged faith in you. This could be someone who's living or someone who's no longer living. Or come forward and light a candle for someone who you think God might be calling you to share your story with. Let's do that as we think about what Paul has taught us in the book.